Hi, folks. Well, obviously, we need to get around each other more than ever at the moment in these tough times. And a man who's certainly doing that is Gus Warland over in New South Wales. He's a Triple M breakfast presenter and he's on Dead Set Legends as well. Was involved with the cricket a few years back. He's been in radio for a long time and he's created a foundation that's really important to do with mental health as well as another initiative. So looking forward to hearing what he has to say there. Plus much more on Legends with Bevo. Welcome to Legends with Bevo. Thanks to the Holdy Hotel, Coopers and Anytime Fitness Glenelg. Yes, and uh, g'day, welcome to Legends with Bevo. And we're joined by a man who has been on Triple M for a very long time, doing great things over there in Sydney on Dead Set Legends and Triple M Breakfast, as well as one of the presenters, Gussie Wall. And great to have you on, mate. How are you going over there with uh, COVID 19 and how's your work been affected? G'day, Bevo. Thanks for having me, mate. I've got sort of the type of personality that tries to make the most of things, try to be as positive as possible. So, have pivoted quite quickly into sort of a new regime of getting up. At the same time, keeping my schedule, having a shave, uh, getting up at 5.30, doing my exercise, having a decent breakfast. And then, like you, mate, talking to people all day, um, finding out how they're coping. Um, some stuff is wonderful. Some stuff's inspirational. Other stuff is extremely emotional. Thank you for the kind introduction with Triple M. It's, um, you know, very much now gotcha for life, my uh, mental fitness foundation. And at the moment, everyone is struggling with their mental fitness. So we are very, very busy. And obviously, yeah, you started this foundation you just mentioned, got you got you for life. Um, it all started because you sadly lost one of your close mates to suicide. Uh, talk us through the foundation and what it's all about and how people can get involved. Yeah, so yeah, it started, I just did a show on the ABC called Man Up. You can still see that if you want to see it. It's, called, it's on iView. We just ticked over 70 million views worldwide. So something I'm very, very proud of. And it was basically me challenging masculinity in this country and whether or not masculinity is actually causing um, us to lose so many Australian blokes every single day to suicide, Bevo. We lose six a day every day. Uh, we lose two beautiful ladies as well. So we're losing over eight people a day every day to suicide. It's the number one way to die if you're an Australian male aged between 15 and 44. So just sit in that. That, that sentence for a moment, the number one way to die if you're a 15 to 44 year old Aussie male is to, is to lose your own life through suicide. So um, I had a huge opportunity with the Man Up show to challenge why a mate of mine took his own life, someone who I thought had absolutely ticked all the boxes and he seemed to me to be pretty perfect. Um, and it was a journey for me to work out why he took his own life. And, what basically it came down to is a lot of Aussie blokes bury their emotions. We're told at a young age just to, you know, to put up and shut up and just get on with it, man up, shut up, and just bury your emotions. And um, I think we now know that that's not the way to do things. So Gotcha for Life was built to look after any people out there doing wonderful work, changing what it takes to be a man and a woman today because it's so different to the man rules and the women rules that was built so many years ago. And then giving the blokes the emotional muscle to actually have a conversation, to start that conversation and to have a chat like you and I now with a bit of honesty, a bit of vulnerability um, and without any BS because it's fine to have those conversations with your mates talking about sport and the weather and work and that type of stuff and having a joke. And I love that larrikin part of Australia, but there's got to be someone in your life that you can share stuff with that's really important. And you shouldn't be burying the emotions that you have and you certainly shouldn't be worrying alone. So Gotcha for Life was built to go around to schools and sporting clubs and do our best to sort of teach Aussie blokes and young boys what it takes to be a man today. And it's okay not to be okay. Well done, mate. That's just oh, so awesome you've created that foundation and uh, credit to you um, and everyone involved in that because, like you said, it's such an important thing and those sort of stats are just... Yeah, it almost brings to tears, doesn't it? It's, it's horrible. And I guess um, oh. the, the good thing is that, you know, there is more awareness out there about it. And obviously we're reducing these numbers. Um, but yeah, more needs to be done for sure. Yeah, I mean, the thing, Bevo, is that we can talk to the cows come home about awareness, but we've got to have action behind the awareness. That's the most important thing. I think if you ask people now, what um, you know, how are you feeling? They're more likely to say, oh, look, you know, I'm going through 
few things, but she'll be right, mate. You know, and that's sort of the end of the conversation. And someone might say, oh, look, I'm here for you if, if, if you need me. You know what I mean? So it's on a level that is still caring and loving, but it's on a very surface level. What we need is your best mate to turn into your best friend and to go, you know what, let's just sit for half an hour and just dig down a little bit more on how you're actually coping and, and share with me how you truly feel with, with honesty and vulnerability. And then that, that, that mateship turns into friendship and becomes even stronger. It doesn't mean you have to have to have a deep and meaningful conversation every five minutes or burst into tears, but you should have someone that you're completely and utterly vulnerable with. So you can get all that stuff out because otherwise it's just a pressure cooker of shit that is just building and building and building. And eventually, like anything, it's going to explode. And that may not be suicide, but it might be anxiety, depression. It might be just you not living the fullest life that you possibly can. So if you have someone you're sharing stuff with, it is hugely important, I believe. And um, the programs that we support, like the Tomorrow Man program and the Tomorrow Woman program, as an example, um, you know, you go there for an hour and a half or now an online, and you sit there in a room with like-minded people and you realize you're not the only one that's going through stuff and you're sort of a bit of a tr part of a tribe or a team that is just bumbling through stuff and you realize, hey, most people are doing exactly the same thing and that's okay. Um, don't beat yourself up because you haven't got all the answers. You know what I mean? We're, we're built up in this social media world to be awesome all the time and everything's fantastic. Well, simple fact is it isn't most of the time, you know? And you need to bumble yourself through some stuff. And um, if you realise you're not the only one doing it, it might make it easier for you to cope. And you've also started another initiative called CoLive19 um, as a part of the, the COVID-19 situation. And again, obviously, a lot of people going through mental health issues with all these job losses and the economy being shot and this sort of thing. So um, tell us more about that, Gus. Another great initiative of yours. Thanks, Bevo. Yeah, we thought, well, how can we keep in contact with people? Because we're only physically isolated. We're not isolated completely. And with technology, like you and I, right here, right now, in different parts of the world, into each other, the technology is wonderful. And there's all different types that you can use. So just keep in contact with people is what, is what CoLive is all about. I'd love, CoLive is all about having 19 contacts with 19 people over 19 days. So one person a day, and just FaceTime them or Zoom them or text them or email them or call them. Remember when you used to call people and speak to them on the phone? <laughs> you can actually still do that if you want. These phones are amazing, they can do it. So, and just keep in contact and then just let people know and then just say to people, why don't you do the same thing? So if I do it with you, Bevo, right now, you might then do it tomorrow with another person. You tell them and eventually everyone's doing 19 and eventually we'll connect the planet up and that's the plan behind it. Plus, I reckon if you do anything for about 19 days, it, it forms a bit of a habit. And that means that when we're out of all this um, drama with the virus, hopefully you'll go, ah, oh, even though I'm back at work and I'm running around like a blue ass fly, I'm going to contact at least one person today. So in between going to work or coming home from work or in my lunch hour, I'm just gonna just send a funny photo of myself doing something stupid and I'll send it to a mate of mine, gives him a bit of a laugh and then, he might send one back to you. And that way you've just had a bit of connection. Because I honestly believe I honestly believe suicide is the death of loneliness and disconnection. And we just need to keep connecting with each other. So this was sort of a fun way of doing that. And, um, you know, it's, it's been brilliant. We've had four or five million people get involved in it so far. And I'm hoping that it will continue to grow. Um, and as I said, will continue to be part of people's habits moving forward when we're back in a bit of normality. Yeah, well done again on that initiative. That's a ripper. And, um, and how can people get involved, Gus? Is it just a, a case of just jumping on social media or um, is it just yeah. how do people sort of get involved in this? Yeah, I mean, most people are on social media now, um, but even if you're not and you're listening to this now, just put it in your diary. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to speak to someone different in some way, some way of communicating, some way of connecting you know, one person a day for 19 days. But if you're on social media, whether it's Instagram or Twitter or Facebook, if you go to the Gotcha for Life sites or my sites, you'll see the people that I'm connecting with and you can just sort of um, copy that and go for it. And it's a matter of just, um, you know, having a crack at, at, at trying to find 19 people in 19 days. And it might be that you contact someone that you have and spoken to for years, an old schoolmate or an old, old like used to play sport with or someone you used to work with. 
you know, hunt them down and just let them know you're thinking about them. And that might really make their day. You don't know what people are going through. And if you start giving everyone the benefit of the doubt and saying, you know what, they're going through a bit of a tough thing and you show some kindness and a little bit of love and say, I'm thinking of you and I'm here for you. Um, that's a really good start to start building up these communities and villages again that we probably have got ourselves such a fast paced world now. Uh, we perhaps have forgotten that. So this virus has slowed us all down a bit and it might make us, you know, reconnect um, with each other. Absolutely love it, mate. Fantastic. I'll definitely be getting involved in that one. Hey, um, speaking of uh, getting involved in things, a few years ago, um, now, I like you to love my cricket as well. Um, and a few years ago, Triple M was doing the cricket, which I really hope comes back in because it was fantastic. And um, one of the one of my favourite commentators is Skull. Uh, that's Kerry O'Keefe, for those people who don't know who Skull is. And uh, what was it like working with the great man, Gus? Because there must have been some good laughs there. Oh, it was the best. And Bevo, believe me, I want it to come back as well. It's written into my contract that if we get the cricket rights, uh, which would be for this summer coming, then um, then that's then I'm in. So I'm very excited. It was the best time. And Skull, of course, is an absolute legend. I've known him for a long time. And to be able to work with him and to see how thorough he prepares, how researched he is and how much he knows about the game, is quite incredible. He comes across as a clown and a laugh, and of course that laugh is so infectious. Um, but one of the great 45 minutes of my life, Bevo, was um, Boxing Day in the lead up to lunchtime, the 11 o'clock hour to 12, I got to commentate with Hugh Jackman, um, who you know is my best mate, and Skull. And when Jacko said that he was going to be at the game and going to be at the breakfast and so forth, we said, why don't you come on to Triple M? He said, mate, I'd love to. And I said, who would you like to commentate with? Because it's, you know, I'll do the ball by ball, then you can be the expert, and then we need another expert. And he said, oh, mate, do you reckon we could get Skull? And I so, you know, oh, wow. spoke, to, <laughs> spoke to the bosses at Triple M, and they were like, oh, my God, you're going to, Hugh Jack was going to be on the Triple M calling the cricket. And I'm like... Yeah, 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 he's, he's up for it. Like, he and I used to go to this SCG, you know, with my uncle at 7 o'clock in the morning and run and get the seats. And, like, we, we used to score the test match on our ABC books, um, score books back in the day when we were little. Um, so we, we absolutely loved cricket. And he um, – and Triple M said, absolutely. And I rang Skull and Skull goes, that would be fantastic because, um, you know, he's always admired Hugh and all his work and stuff. So there we were. And – I must admit, I was pretty nervous the morning of the Boxing Day test, but as I got closer and um, I just knew I had a job to do, to obviously do ball by ball, is very important in an Ashes test match. Um, but also just to do it with Jack was great. And, you know, sometimes every six months or so, I've got that recording and I just play it back and we have such a laugh. And getting back to Skull, you know, he's just fantastic company, um, not just in the commentary box, but in between overs when we're not on. But also he walks to the ground as much as he possibly can. So in the MCG and at the Gabba, where our hotels and stuff were, it was probably a half an hour, 40 minute walk back. So rather than getting in the team high ace, we would just walk and Howie would do the same, Mark Howard. And the three of us would walk and we're not big drinkers as a general rule. So we wouldn't be piling into the pubs and stuff after. We'd just walk and talk cricket. And for a cricket tragic like me, uh, imagine, you know, how happy I was in, in and amongst those blokes, just talking and, and calling the ashes and stuff. And it was absolutely brilliant. And, of course, a fantastic result for the Aussies. And when we lost the rights, it was shattering for all of us. Like, every single one of us is involved somehow in either Channel 7 or Fox Cricket now doing coverage. So we're at the ground. So it's easy enough for us now to still put that crew together. And it's just a matter of just organising rosters in the morning so people who aren't on telly can be on doing the Triple M. So um, fingers crossed that we yeah. uh, get it back because it would be <laughs> awesome because then we have the Ashes the following summer. So um, that would be great to do the Ashes again. I've only done eight test matches, Bevo, and I was talking to um, Jim Maxwell the other day at a lunch before we went into lockdown and he's done so many hundreds and and we were just picking his brain and he was just going, mate, I wish I had your same enthusiasm that you have now <laughs> after all these hundred or so. But, you know, I, I just admire him so much. And it's lovely to have said that you've, um, you know, you've called ball by ball in an Ashes Test match. 
Yeah, most definitely. <laughs> very, very envious of that one, mate. And but you've obviously right. uh, worked, worked your butt off, so well done. I, um, now, something that else is uh, very, very controversial at the moment is NRL. Now, uh, there's talk about the NRL season starting in the end of May. Um, obviously, you know, people like, surely this can't be happening and stuff like that, but the NRL are pretty serious about it. Can you actually see this happening, Gussie? I can. I can. I, I've, been, I've been told that they're back on the 4th of May to train. And then we are all ready to rock and roll on the 28th. So, I mean, things can change. As you know, it's the most fluid system at the moment, isn't it? You know, one day to the next, you're not quite sure what's going on. But the curve was over 20% when Rugby League went um, behind closed doors and, sto- and then got stopped. And now it is under 1%. So they're thinking, well, let's go for it. No crowds, of course. But, you know, the, the players want to play. I've spoken to a lot of them and they're very keen to play. Um, The TV, certainly Fox, want to give it a red-hot crack. So, you know, Volandi seems to be very, very pumped. He's got everyone's support. So, let's let's hope so. As long as it's safe and the medical people given the tick of approval, I cannot wait. There's only a certain amount of Netflix you can watch, Bevo. You know what I mean? (laughs) I agree with you, mate. And I'm the same with the AFL. I just want that to start. And obviously, some of the old games are great to watch. But, yeah, you want to see... Like the new stuff, the the modern footy, and, and yeah, let's get that back as well. I reckon. Who do you support in the AFL? Eh? I, I'm a power man, so over here in uh, in Adelaide, um, it's power all the crows. Um, so uh, yeah, definitely a big power man. What about all the yourself? crows? I thought it's one or the other. Surely it's one or the other. No, I was just going to say yeah, port all the way, mate. Um, the crows are the biggest rivals. Like that's like Collingwood and Richmond and uh, West Coast and Freo. You know, it's pretty big over here. So, um, you know, the mm. showdown should really be prime time, even over in Victoria, they love it. So, so I reckon yeah. even over there in the Eastern States, surely you can agree that we deserve a Friday night game for the showdown, surely. <laughs> oh, totally, totally. And I love the Adelaide Oval and I love that whole, I love how you guys all fire up and the song you sing before with NXS and so forth. And yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, my dad was born in Camberwell in um, Victoria, in Melbourne. And um, he's always been a Hawthorne man and my grandfather was the bank manager of Westpac at, at Carlton so he had to change because that's where all the big power brokers used to bank so he had to go for their team so granddad swapped but dad and I have always been hawks and um, since I was born in 68 they've had a pretty good run and um, got, to, got to know the chief really well over the years and just had a heap of fun with a lot of Hawthorne people and a few big nights when we won the three in a row so um <laughs> It's it's been it's been a good ride being a Hawthorne fan and but being a Sydney boy I'm a Roosters fan and we've won back to back NRL titles as well so it's, been, been, it's been pretty good. <laughs> well done, mate. <laughs> hey, um, just a question you. for you: How, What's the Eastern States think about a state of origin being over here in Adelaide this year? Obviously, it's um it's up in the air at the moment. Yeah. I don't know what's going to happen with the COVID nineteen situation, but um, just the fact we've that had a few in Melbourne and we've had one in Perth. Last yeah. year, are they are they okay with that, or they're not too happy? Yeah, with absolutely, <laughs> no no problem. I mean, we understand that the you know Western Australia and South Australia and certainly um, Melbourne, you know, are all about the VFL and the AFL. But at the end of the day, the Storm have had a good solid traditional sort of twelve to fifteen thousand and and good numbers, obviously on the telly. Um, Perth numbers were huge in state of origin. Um, Melbourne have had it a couple of times, again, sellouts. So Adelaide Oval, what an absolute picture that will be if we have origin at Adelaide Oval as expected um, and got you for life in the NRL and, and the state of origin have, have jumped into bed with each other. So we're the, we're the um, charity partner for origin. So I will be there in the middle of the Adelaide Oval getting everyone to go for a world record man hug at half time. That's the plan. <laughs> I'll have, and, a bit, um, I'll have a beer it'll be with you, great mate. to go to Adelaide. I'll, I'll definitely have a beer Perfect. with you in, in Adelaide. Look forward to it. <laughs> that, that sounds good, Bevo. I'm looking forward to staying across in the city, walking over to the ground. What an absolute picture. Um, I remember calling the Ashes Test match there, the Ashes Test number two, um, day-nighter against the Poms. And what a different game it was in the afternoon compared in the evening and how... Jimmy Anderson got it hooping around and stuff. It was fantastic. Uh, I think Adelaide Oval is the most beautiful ground and how they've been able to 
put all the new stuff in, but also keep the heel and the scoreboard. And it, it's they've done it absolutely beautifully. Yeah, I totally agree with you, 100%. And you know, those people that were talking about you know, not moving across the Adelaide Oval and complaining about it, I think they're kind of eating their words now because, um, yeah, it's just been sensational for sure. No, you've, you've nailed it there, Gussie. Um, speaking of nailing it, mate, um, you are well and truly nailing, nailing it, my friend, with, uh, with cricket, with Triple M, with everything you're doing, we've got Triple Life and uh, Co-Live 19. Keep up the great work. Great to chat to you and I uh, look forward to speaking again and uh, having that beer this year when the State of Origin is on, whatever that might be, mate. Bevo, that would be great. I'll uh, get your mobile number and I'll let you know when I hit town and we can have a couple of sherbets. That'll be fantastic. And thanks for what you're doing. Good, positive conversations with people is, is always required, especially at the moment when everyone is looking for content to, to, to listen to and to watch. So thanks for including me, mate, and um, lovely to meet you. You too. Take care. Catch you later, mate. The Legends with Bevo. Thanks to the Holdy Hotel. Coopers and Anytime Fitness Flanelle.